Who doesn't love butter? Glorious butter on top of your waffles or pancakes or to saute things. And oh my God. So one of the hardest things for me to give up that and cheese. I know you know that. But anyway, so that led me to years of experimenting. And I first introduced uh, my glorious butterless butter here in the homemade vegan pantry. Uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it. So easy to make. Now, it does require an ingredient called lecithin, which is an emulsifier. An emulsifier is something that allows the emulsion between two competing elements, such as oil and water, that want to separate. But an emulsifier will combine them and allow them to remain in suspension with each other. We don't always have lecithin on hand, but we can get something called aquafaba, which is just bean water, chickpea water, and I just drained this yesterday from a can of chickpeas, and that is going to be our emulsifier for our spreadable butter. So that is one of the things about butter, isn't it? You pull the butter out of the refrigerator, it's hard as rock, you can't spread it on your toast, and that has led to these tubs of spreadable butters, which were originally called margarine back in the uh, 1860s, 70s, when margarine was first invented because of the dairy lobby, margarine, guess what color it was? It was pink because of complaints that uh, having a yellow margarine would lead to consumer confusion. So that argument has been going on for a long time. But today we do have vegan butter. That is a legal term today. And uh, But today I'm going to make you a spreadable vegan butter. Um, so, let's get started. The key to emulsification is temperature. Now, butter is typically churned from dairy cream, and it's churned at about 55 degrees. That is the magic temperature at which butter comes together. So it's the same thing with vegan butter or vegan margarine, whatever you want to call it. We want to be able to emulsify it at that temperature, at which point the oil and the liquid will come together into a lovely single mass. So in order to do that, we're going to be using two different types of oil. We're going to use coconut oil and we're going to use a liquid oil. I have avocado oil today. You can use canola or grapeseed or sunflower, whatever liquid oil you want. But when all of this hits the blender, you want it to reach that magical temperature of 55 degrees. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, I'm starting out with cold aquafaba. That's been in the refrigerator all overnight. I have some cold non-dairy milk, uh, plant milk. This is actually made out of the BAM nut. But you can use soy or oat or whatever. I'm going to add just a little teaspoon of apple cider vinegar to that to give it a little cultured flavor and also to make this into sort of a buttermilk. So that's cold. I refrigerated the oil as well. And then I melted the coconut oil, being careful not to raise the temperature above uh, 80 or so. Uh, this is liquid. Coconut oil uh, liquefies at slightly above 70 degrees, so you don't need to get it hot in order to melt it. So depending on where it is, it's somewhere between 75 and 81, as you can see on the temperature. You don't need a thermometer. Uh, you can just make sure that it's not really warm to the touch. Now, we're going to add everything all at once into the blender. So I've got a cup and a quarter of melted coconut oil. I have a half a cup of a liquid oil that has been chilled in the refrigerator. I have six tablespoons of non-dairy milk. I'm using Bam Nut today that I added a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar to just to thicken it up a little bit, curdle it, make it taste like buttermilk. You can add oat milk or soy milk, that's fine as well. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of cold aquafaba, which is going to act as lecithin, as the emulsifier, just the right amount of starch in the aquafaba will act like an emulsifier and kind of bring it all together. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt. If you want a salt-free butter, you can omit it. And we're going to blend it off. Now let me just tell you one important fact. If for some reason it does not emulsify and turn into a lovely butter, have no fear, all is not lost. Because all you have to do is refrigerate it for a while and then re-blend it 
and I guarantee it will all come together. So let's give this a go and see whether we got the temperature right. All right. There we go. So it has emulsified. We have to refrigerate it, of course, for it to come together. And if there's any separation, we're going to put it back in here. All right, I'm going to take the temperature. And as you can see, it's a little hot. I didn't get the temperatures quite right. It's 78 degrees, 79 degrees, which is why it is a little liquid. So it's a good thing that it didn't come together here because now I can show you how to fix it. So, because I didn't get the temperature quite right, uh, but if, if you can sort of see along the edge here where it was more like mayonnaise, uh, it was becoming mm, butter-like. I'm gonna have to chill this in the refrigerator or in the freezer, and as you can see, it's already beginning to separate. And I'm pouring it into metal containers because metal, of course, conducts heat and cold much better than anything else. And I'm just going to stick these in the freezer for a little bit to bring the temperature back down and I'm going to put it back in the blender and re-blend it. So I'll see you back soon. Okay, I'm just checking the temperature, whether it is low enough. Oh, I think it might be ready. I think it might be ready. Okay, I pulled these out of the freezer. They're beginning to get a little frozen around the edges. I'm going to put it back in the blender and we're going to see whether it comes together. Alrighty, it is now completely emulsified. You can see how beautiful it is. It's not going to separate. All we have to do is chill it for a little bit so it reaches the perfect consistency. Well, the temperature of this butter is 68, which is why I have to put it back in the refrigerator to firm up. Had I chilled the mixture a little bit longer, I probably pulled it out a little bit too soon. I pulled it out when it was around 50, 55 degrees because uh, you know, just the churning process in the blender heated it up a little bit. Uh, so, probably should have brought the temperature down to something like, I don't know, 40. Uh, so, it's a little bit liquid right now, but it will not separate at this point. The only thing is, it requires some time in the refrigerator to firm up. On the exterior of the blender, right here, uh, you have, we do have something that is spreadable, like butter. Tastes like butter, looks like butter. Uh, that's where the temperature hadn't yet fallen. So try to chill that mixture to below 55 so that it does not separate. Um, and then it comes together as butter in your blender and not have to do this, you know, pour it and chill it and put it back in their business. But hey, it still works in the end. That's what's important. It's only a little lumpy because I've got really cold parts with not quite yet congealed parts. But look at that, isn't that, mm, there we go. That is turning into a nice spreadable butter. Um, I'll just put that in a container. Look at that, there we go. See how easy it is to make butter at home. Hi, Echo.
Well, thank you for joining this week's episode of The Vegan Good Life. I'll see you again soon.